is Peter Schrager, NFL Network, Good Morning Football co-host, and you can see him there uh, Monday through Friday at 7 Eastern. Uh, Peter joins us on the program now. How real are these Caleb Williams rumors, or is it becoming a story of, I, I, there's five teams I'll go to, I want a piece of the team, what do you make of this? Or, you know, could he go back to school? Feels like there's a lot going on here. Well, the NFL's monitoring this stuff, Dan, obviously. And that was the first time I heard of the piece of the team conversation. That one just showed up this week, and I had not heard that prior prior to this. But the NIL money makes it different. This isn't a State Farm commercial where he's making seven figures, and he's at USC in L.A. where he's a bigger star than either quarterback of the Chargers or the Rams, and those guys are pretty notable. So this is a very specific case, but I don't think it's going to be – necessarily an oddity moving forward when these players are getting paid in college where they don't have to leave for the NFL or they can be a little bit more selective. He's the number one prospect, but I think there's going to be another number one prospect next year, the year after that. And if they're paid the way they are in college right now, what's the rush? He's living a pretty good life as is. What about Lincoln Riley possibly coaching in the NFL as a package deal? Yeah, I'd be interested in that one. Obviously, Lincoln and him had the history with Oklahoma. And you know who else is with him in L.A. right now? Cliff Kingsbury is coaching the offense. So he's getting NFL coaching, and he's getting his guy in Lincoln. He's getting it at that level. But uh, I'm not saying it's a cautionary tale with some of these college coaches. But the last couple have been Rule and have been Urban. Those are different styles than maybe uh, – uh, and Cliff was another one. Different style than Lincoln Riley. But I think the NFL, um, we go through these waves of hot college coach. Chip Kelly, let's bring in that offense. Let's go. I, I'm not sure any teams are, are, are running and rolling out the red carpets for their college coach right now as far as how the last few have gone, and there are some very worthy candidates in the league. I'm also uh, curious about the Cardinals as they move forward. Kyler Murray is going to practice. If you're Kyler Murray, you want to play because you want to win so they don't draft your replacement. But if you're the front office, do you want Kyler Murray to play and maybe prevent you from getting Caleb Williams and restarting your franchise? What's interesting is, you know, Kyler during the summer went to Norman, Oklahoma. They were either honoring him or they were putting a, a statue of him because he won the Heisman. And all of the Cardinals brass went. The head coach, the president, the GM, the PR guy, Mark Dalton, they all flew into Norman, Oklahoma. And it was like one of these moments where I'm like, it's a summer weekend. Uh, the last thing I'm sure Monty Austin Fort needs to be doing is flying to Norman. And I started texting people in the Arizona organization and it was like, how's Kyler doing? And they're like, he's been amazing. Like at the facility, warming up at the facility rehabbing. And I think there's this vision that like, Oh, well, Kyler's done. Cause he hurt his knee. And I, I get the feeling that they doubled down on Kyler. They paid him his money. They fired the GM who, who signed him to that deal. They fired the head coach who, who went and drafted him first overall. But like, I get the feeling that organization in Bidwell, they are still all in on Kyler. So if they were to win a couple games with Kyler and they missed out on Caleb Williams, I don't think anyone would be shaking their fists. I think that building still believes in him. And to Kyler's credit, the narrative, at least internally, has changed. And hopefully externally, he'll be able to show it on the field this season. How real is the Aaron Rodgers coming back late this season, do you think? Very real. Yeah, very real. He, I've spoken to Salah both on Good Morning Football and off the record and you know, the key thing is, like, these guys are not doctors. These are not individuals who are going to be telling him what he cannot do um, and what he can do. And there's not going to be anyone there to say, hey, go out there and play. We want you out there. Rodgers is wired differently, as we know, and he is committed to getting back on that field. Now, he's got the top medical staff in the world with Ella Trosh and, of course, the Jets. If they tell him that this is, like, you know, possibly can ruin your career, it can actually hurt you long term in your life, I would like to think cooler heads are prevailing, but, like, he is dead set, laser focused on getting back before the end of the season. And if the Jets can just hang in there and make these games competitive, and if Zach Wilson can do enough to get them into a position where in late December, early January, they're playing relevant football, like I would not in the slightest be shocked. Rodgers seems to have a focus, and the doubters are feeding him in so many ways in his life. Now, I guess he's going to defy science, which I think uh, wouldn't be odd for Aaron Rodgers in the last couple of years. He kind of to go by the beat of his own drum and thinks that his body he can will this thing to happen. And here we go. Who gets traded? Hmm. I think there's interesting names. So, like, I, I would have told you two days ago, and I'm not trying to say, oh, you know, pat me on the back, but, like, Hardman was a name that hasn't been playing. Uh, you looked at Frank Clark in Denver. That wasn't working out. And, of course, Randy Gregory, what was going on there in Denver as well. But I would look at players who are making big money 
who not necessarily are getting big snaps. So, again, Carl Lawson, a player in the Jets, they've got a huge defensive lineman rotation. Carl Lawson can still play good football. Hasn't been in the mix necessarily with that. You look at some of the running backs in the league. You look at guys that, you know, maybe Rashawn Penny up there in Philadelphia who was a big signing. It's a big, but they got their guys. DeAndre Swift and Gainwell have been the guys. Do you ship him off to a contender instead and say, well, look, we don't have the best use for him for what he's getting snap-wise. I hate saying names. I name those two because often they don't get traded and you're like, well, what the heck? You said it. No, but those are the players that are looking to be moved. And you look at teams, you look at Denver, you know, and in Denver situation, a lot of these guys, you know, they've been making big money with different people bringing them in. You look at Carolina. Okay, well, what can we ship off? We've done it in the past. Like, is Brian Burns available? Well, surely looks like a silly move to trade Christian McCaffrey a couple of years ago. <laughs> are they going to make that mistake twice and trade a star player and say, well, we were done for the season? Uh, big money, big snaps, and for teams that aren't necessarily contending, those are the guys I would circle. What about Derrick Henry, that possibility, or Devontae Adams? I don't think Titans view like they're out of this thing. Devontae Adams, they, you know, I see the Instagram post. He's writing the Iliad on an interesting <laughs> Instagram post. They won the last two games. So, like, the, the Raiders, they, they, they still think they're in this thing, and he's a great player. Now, look at, like, Hunter Renfro. In two years with Josh McDaniels, hasn't been a focus. So it's maybe Hunter Renfro a possibility. Yes, but mm. I don't think Devontae Adams. Another one, the Cousins thing. I reported this on Fox NFL kickoff last week. Yes, in fantasy football and on paper, like, Kirk Cousins, he's in his final year of his contract, and – He's making $35 million and you look at what's left, and it's actually not that bad a contract for a contender, but the Vikings still believe they're in it, and the Vikings still believe that Kirk is their best option at quarterback, and after beating the Bears, they don't see this thing as done deal, so they're looking to be competitive. So it's, I don't think you're going to get a star player like Derrick Henry or Kirk Cousins in the next couple of weeks. He hosts the season with Peter Schrager podcast, available wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, he'll be a contestant next week on yeah. Celebrity Jeopardy. Did you, already, did you already tape it? Yes. Have you done it? Uh, no, no. Um, I I have no interest in doing it. Why not? I just, I have, I don't know. You know, when they were asking Maybe. if you wanted to host Jeopardy, they were looking for a new yeah. host there. I, I turned, I told yeah. them I, I didn't want to do that. I see. I, I would think you would be incredible in that role. I had the opportunity, had Alex Trebek retired when they thought he was going to retire, then I was going to be offered the job. And then it didn't happen. I did uh, Sports Jeopardy, which I yep. loved. But no, I, I, I don't want to get on there because you're going to miss a, a, a question and people are going to go, how could you miss that? But when you're up there fighting for survival, and I would see this with these contestants, man, and you would be, it'd be the most obvious question. You'll go, oh, no. Blame the Frank. Yes, did you Dan, have a, I, a moment? Did you have a moment? Multiple. But let me tell you something. <laughs> Unlike you, I am a glory hog, a fame whore, <laughs> love being on TV, and thought that this was going to be like, look, the writers were on strike, the actors were on strike, Peter Schrager for Celebrity Jeopardy. I don't think that's coming around too often. Uh, so I ran at the opportunity, Okay. flew out to L.A., can I tell you, it was the coolest experience of my life. It films next when it's, it's airing next Wednesday at eight o'clock Eastern. And I want everyone to watch. Even if you like me or you hate me, you're going <laughs> to enjoy the experience. But let me tell you the crazy part about it. So I had answers, but no one tells me about the buzzer. It's all about the buzzer. The timing. So here's the rule. Ken Jennings gives you the clue and say the answer is like, this wide receiver, you know, caught 100 passes for the Rams a couple of years ago. And he says it like that. So I'm like, who is Cooper Cup? Who is Cooper Cup? But it, you're not allowed to buzz until after he finishes the clue. And if you buzz before the clue, you're locked out for like five seconds. So if you see anyone on Jeopardy going like this, like frantically, like <laughs> it's because they buzzed early. So win or lose or whatever, the buzzer is most of the skill set here. And once you get that rhythm down, it becomes a little easier. I'll tell you, I went up against Mira Sorvino, who's won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, Mira Sorvino is a huge actress. She's, you know, Romy and Michelle and Mighty Aphrodite. Her father's Paul Sorvino. What do you think her reaction was when she comes into Celebrity Jeopardy and she sees Peter <laughs> Schrager, host of cable television's Good Morning Football? Wait, Great. that sounded like that would have been a question by, you know, or an answer. <laughs> um, who is Peter Schrager? Yeah, yeah, nobody knows. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure Mira is uh, watching Good Morning Football. Mira's here to watch the Jaguars O-line talk this morning. Um, it was awesome. They were cool. Ken Jennings was cool. 
Uh, it was a once in a lifetime experience. I cannot reveal how I did. Okay. But I wasn't embarrassed. I'll tell you that. Did they have some football questions for you? There was. There was a couple. And I will tell you, I was making sure that I got those. Okay. And I was right. But the buzzer screwed me a couple times. And people are probably going to be like, how does he not know that? But this is what I was told that one of the contestants we had for uh, Sports Jeopardy, he said he studied my cadence in how I delivered the clue because he wanted to know when he could buzz in. Because you're right, it's all about timing. When you see Fritzy, Fritzy would be, you know, slamming it down when the Dan S were me. on. Yes. And, and this guy said he studied my cadence of how I delivered a clue Brilliant. to know the timing. And then, and he was unbelievable. He would buzz in and the other guys are, you could see them just slamming their thumbs down because they were shut out. Couldn't get in. Dude, you would have loved this. So I got told like eight days in advance that I'm sure someone dropped out. They're like, do you want to go? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I get on the plane and if someone told you like you're on Jeopardy tomorrow, like what would you, I swear I was on the plane. Like, Studying. You know, like Southwest, Southwest <laughs> flight, like, you know, boarding group B. And I'm like on Wikipedia with the janky Wi-Fi, like, like state capitals, <laughs> clouds. I'm like, I might need to know cumulus clouds. I was, I was just, <laughs> I looked up Bonaparte. I'm like, what is, give me some Bonaparte facts. Let's get Napoleon involved. None of those topics came out. It was like words that start with the letter H, you know, like none of the you can ever. Stu- so I started studying U.S. president. <laughs> like, none of it mattered. None of it mattered. Uh, it, it was like when I hosted the Olympics and I thought, God, I got to know every Olympian. I have to know everything yeah. about everything. And it, I, it, it was ruining my experience until Al Michaels goes, Dan, my man, just know the next 15 minutes. That's yes! it. That's, That's it. it. Don't know everything. Just know the next 15 minutes of what you're covering. I go, thank you, Al. Thank you. Um, the funniest thing, just real quick, you like this. She, she's got, I'm against Mira Servino. I'm like, all right, actress. I Google her. Went to Harvard and is an ambassador <laughs> for the UN. Like, <laughs> Poll question, Seaton. Would you give that to uh, our celebrity here? Yes. <laughs> Peter Schrager. Who is Peter Schrager? Correct. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see. We have Trevor Lawrence is a dot, 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 top 10 quarterback. Somewhat disappointing. Hmm. Go top 10 quarterback. They've won a couple games in a row. They've won three games in a row. He's done. He's won a playoff game. Like, yeah, he's fine. He, he's not in the conversation with the other guys just yet, but we've been watching him since high school. Yeah. We've been hearing about him since high school. And for him not to fall on his face is an achievement in itself. And I think he makes the Jaguars relevant come de- December and January. So, yeah, I'm going to say the first part. Top 10 quarterback, sure. How threatening are the Saints? I don't know. They're like Jekyll and Hyde. You know, they beat the, the, the snot out of the Patriots, and then they lose a tough one in Houston. They're a nice team, and they're probably going to win that division. I would think that them and Tampa are going to be in the final conversation. But, like, I— are you going into the Superdome is hard. I don't know if you're, you know, shaking in your boots in the playoffs if you're a, a Niners or an Eagles team and Derek Carr and Dennis Allen are coming to town. Good luck uh, on Celebrity Jeopardy. Well, you already know how you did, but, uh, you yeah. know, we're we're with you. A hundred, it was a blast. Hundred and ten percent, we're with you. Yeah. Uh, now, some of us are rooting for uh, Mira Sorbino. Just want to let great. you know. Yeah. She just, brings it. No names, you. no names here, but just some people – Secretly, you're like, I'm not rooting for Schrager. That's it. Sorvino. I understand. Uh, my best to the crew there at uh, Good Morning Football. You're the man. The Thank best. you, buddy. Thank you, guys. That's Peter Schrager. He's uh, one of the co-hosts there Good Morning Football, Monday through Friday at 7 Eastern. Very entertaining show. You do a great job. Also, his podcast, The Season, with Peter Schrager. You spell it S-C-H-R-A-G-E-R. Podcast available wherever you get your podcast. And also... He's a celebrity on Celebrity Jeopardy.